User story maps help teams define what to build, visualize what's needed now and what could be implemented later, and maintain visibility for how it all fits together. They enable user-centered conversations, collaboration, and feature prioritization to align and guide iterative product development. Instead of lengthy business requirements, documents, and functional design specifications that are difficult to interpret, user story maps work much better as lightweight representations of what needs to happen and connect the story with the requirements in a visual way. In general, this process uses sticky notes and sketches to outline the interactions that the team expects users to go through to complete their goals in a product. Jeff Patton popularized the method, which is now very popular in the tech industry. A user story map depicts three types of actions at different granularity. One, activities. Activities represent the high-level tasks that users aim to complete in the digital product. For example, create an account. It often can be translated into an epic. The second type is steps which sit directly underneath activities and also display in sequential order to help tell a story and visualize how it needs to happen. Steps represent the specific subtasks that users will go through in the product to complete the activity above, like adding name, email, and password. Then you define the details and requirements. Those go right here. Details and requirements are the third level of the story map and describe the lowest granularity interactions that the team anticipates users will experience to complete the step above. For example, enter username or email and enter password appear as two separate details underneath the login step. Once you get here, you may wonder what needs to be prioritized. If you are a product team that validates product initiatives and builds the minimum viable product before committing to what could be the perfect solution, you may need to spend time discussing requirements and details with stakeholders and discussing with the engineering team which requirements will make things difficult and which could be simplified. What you are trying to do is to define the scope of the story map, in a way future-proofing the initiative but defining what needs to be done implemented in a way that adapts to future iterations. This is one of the reasons why this is so important. Also, state whether your story map will portray a current or a future iteration of the product and whether you will map an entire product, just one feature, or a section of the experience, or even if this will affect all users or just one segment. You can even use different sticky notes for each segment. While doing this, start defining what features will be implemented now and what would be implemented in future iterations. To do that, add requirements that need to be implemented now. Here and anything outside of this should be listed for future iterations right here. Once you have clarity on what the requirements and key things that will be implemented during this sprint or product iteration, are, then for better clarification, you will define the user stories related to those requirements. This doesn't have to happen here, but it will help keep everything in one place. Keep in mind that user stories can be written at a high level to describe a full product or feature and what it enables users to do, or at a low level, to outline an interface element and its value for example. As a checking account holder, I want to deposit a check from my mobile device so that I don't have to waste time going to the bank. Here is an example of a low-level user story. As a checking account holder, I want to save my credentials so that I don't have to input my username and password each time I log in. Once the user story mapping is done, you can review it with stakeholders and update your EPIC or initiative canvas. This is always done before you start typing your EPIC and your final user stories. It's important to do this because it will help you evaluate the process and ensure you are not missing any requirements and use cases as you have to follow all the steps that the user needs to take one by one.
Here is an example of a user story mapping. If you are using an EPIC or initiative canvas to define your next product, EPIC or initiative, you will have to go back to that and update your user stories and requirements based on that. Or you can leave those blanks and add a link to the user story mapping so people have access to the most updated version. To use the user story mapping template, you can add a session, select the tool, and then start using it. You can collaborate with team members during the process by sharing this link. You can also share the user story mapping with stakeholder and gather feedback by sharing your screen, adding it to an asynchronous meeting like this. The video should walk them through the process and all the steps and activities the user will have to take. You can even add a link to the board. Then ask questions. Those questions should make stakeholders think about other use cases, provide feedback, and think about potential risks. This is a good way to give stakeholders enough time to think and digest the information before they can provide good feedback. Remember to add a due date, invite them, and also provide enough information. Remember that if they don't have access to the information, they may not be able to answer your questions or provide any feedback. Let us know if you have any questions.